All right, we'll get started with this tutorial very quickly in just a couple minutes, and I am going to show you now how to take an image, any image, and create a normal map and a specular map from that image using GIMP. So once we get going here, make sure all the commercials are out of the way for anyone that's going to be joining us. And we will get started on making a couple of map images. All right, if you're just joining us now, I just finished a uh, KW. I'm I'm stopping the stream in between each tutorial, it's just so I can put them up separately. So it was me, stopped the stream, so I could get it saved on Twitch as a separate tutorial. And I'm starting tutorial number two. Yeah, the first one was a quick one, just on how to install GIMP and get the proper plugins. And now we are going into doing some editing with GIMP, making a normal map and a specular map image, which will be, again, a separate tutorial. But will take a little bit longer than the last one. Not too long, it's actually a very simple process. And we'll get started now with opening up GIMP. Alrighty. First we need to get our image that we want to make a normal and specular map from. And I am going to take an image right out of my PV15 folder and fill planes and I'm gonna grab these three to show you the difference between the three images the Apple diffuse Apple normal Apple specular we're gonna open all three of those hopefully we got a pop-up underneath okay I love the way GIMP sometimes pops up things behind. All right, so basically what we're going to do here is take this picture of apples, and I'm going to show you how to create your normal map image that we have here and a specular image which we have here using just this image of the apples. And to get started, basically load up any image that you need to have your normal and specular map. I'm going to use the apples because when creating fill planes from the 2013, it did not contain these two other images, but they are needed to use in the dynamic fill planes for the 2015 version. So we'll start you with showing apples, and basically every one of them is going to be the same process. And you'll find the normal and specular maps on many mods and some of them are missing and people just duplicated this first image three times and used it for all three so you can correct those if you get to them first thing is select the image that you want the normal map to be made out of and then you're gonna go into your filters and go to map and go down to normal map and you'll get this little pop-up window right here now what I like to use is filter Sobel 3x3 three three. just select that filter everything else you can keep the same just click OK and voila you'll notice I have a normal map image that is the same as the one I had previously created you would just go to file export and instead of Apple diffuse I would name it to Apple normal and you can export replace it you can save all of these images under BC1 DXT1 format and for the normal maps you do not need to generate MIP maps and you also do not for the specular but you would do that if it was just the regular diffuse graphic so once that's done you just click OK and you have your image saved as a normal map Next, great to hear, Throsby. Woohoo, it works. All right, 
Next, that was pretty simple. There is no real tool in, built into GIMP to make your specular maps, so we're going to show you. And I'm just basically going to edit, undo my normal map step, is how I do it, because then I can get back to the original image. To create the specular map, which is your black and white highlights of the different tones, it basically is going to give you uh, some highlights there on the darker parts and what we're going to do with that is go to colors and we are going to take this picture and we are just going to desaturate it and take all the color out of it so here we have a desaturated picture of our apples the next step we want to do is go to colors and go to your levels and you get this wonderful adjust color levels window now what you do to create your specular map is you're just gonna mess with the spectrum here and you see this little triangle on the left hand side right below the graph here just take that one and I want you to drag that to right about where the gray one in the middle is the gray ones gonna move so kinda eyeball where it is now grab that one and we'll bring that right to the middle right here and why is it turning red now that all of a sudden I have no idea it shouldn't be red because I actually let's go to I didn't save my levels or my uh, yeah colors desaturate now we're going to do it uh, levels it went back let's go to colors try this again desaturate and we'll save it I probably downloaded a new version of the plugin because it never did this before me uh, we're gonna export it we'll f export that graphic as our s Apple specular the way it is right now and click OK and it didn't it return back to where I wanted it so why is it doing that levels no not levels let's go to desaturate let's image ah this always works merge visible layers once you change it click to merge visible layers why does it keep returning to this? I never had this problem before. Am I getting a pop-up that I don't see to save it? No. Select all colors. Let's do a collect all colors desaturate. Then colors boy we messed this tutorial up good and didn't we anyhow colors <laughs> select all desaturate so you want to go to select all so I have everything selected I'm pretty sure that's what I was doing wrong I haven't done this in so long then go to your colors desaturate and you'll get this and let's try to go to color levels and it pops right back up interesting why is it not saving let me try to load that image one more time here I've never had that problem things that happen like I said, you gotta have patience to do map ed editing. Apples diffuse, open, image, colors, desaturate, we're desaturated. And it turns right back. Hmm. 
I am stumped with why it's doing this. Never did it before. Well, anyway, looks like we're messed up on the specular map image. I don't know if you guys are having any issues with uh, desaturating saving or not, but I am. And I think I realize why it is. Oh my gosh, you won't believe this. You will not believe it. There's an OK dialog on my other monitor that I'm not watching. Yeah, you want lightness selected. There, we have our desaturated image. <laughs> Now, I wonder why I never had any problem. I'm not used to working with two monitors. All right, so <laughs> let's get back to the show. <laughs> we'll trim this one out. Maybe we should start it over. Anyway, we have our desaturated image. Let's take and merge all our visible layers. And once you have that, you go to Colors and levels. Now we have the proper image. Now you take this left arrow as I was showing you before, drag it to the center roughly where the other arrow was, then take your right white arrow pointing up and bring that one in to just about there. Click OK, file, export that as your specular image. and with your BC1 setting, no MIP maps, and you're good to go. All right, so it was the long way around, but we finally figured out that I had the wrong little box popping up, the dialogue on the wrong other mem yeah, the other monitor. But that's basically how you can create your diffuse, normal, and specular maps. So we'll go through that one more time real quick without all the, and I'll trim the video down to get the, just the proper process. So creating a GIMP image. Let's open up. Uh, let's try something different. We'll try the cherries this time. Here we have the three diffuse, normal, and specular map for cherries. We'll close that one. And here's your cherries. We're going to make that image, which is your normal map and your cherry specular map from the no the regular image, diffuse image. First thing you're going to do is go to your filters, go down to map, and if you did the other tutorial that I just finished, you will find a normal map option. Click on normal map, select the Sobel 3x3, and then click OK. And we have our normal map image just like we need. You want to export that new normal map image as your new cherries by going File, Export, Cherry Normal. You'll have to type in the normal after it, but you'll have the diffuse, so just take it and change the word diffuse to normal. And then click Export, Replace. I'm going to replace. You won't get the Replace option, but you will get this box. Set it as a BC1. DXT1 without MIP maps, click OK, and you now have your Cherry Normal map. Now we'll go back and we will create the specular map by going Edit, Undo the Normal map. We have the cherries again. Go to your colors and click Desaturate, and you'll get this pop up right here. Nice to see you pop up have lightness selected and just click OK and you have your grayscale image of the cherries then we're going to go to color and then go to levels and bring up the adjust color levels again we're going to take the spectrum left arrow on the spectrum and drag it over to about where the middle gray arrow is it's going to get pretty dark then we're going to take the right arrow and bring it again right to about where that gray arrow is. And it's, you know, if you want to get a little bit lighter, you can, and images are weird. Sometimes you don't want to get it too dark and lose some of the detail, but you're getting that basically the real highs and the real lows into a black and white image. So 
We'll bring this one back here a little bit. Just get a really nice contrast between the blacks and the whites, such as there. It's a good range. Click OK, and it's actually a lot better than the one I previously created, so I'm going to take that once you have it and file export, and that is your cherry specular. We're going to, f I'm going to just collect mine and overwrite it. Cherry specular image dot DDS export and select the BC1 again with no MIP maps. Click OK and you're good to go. Now, MIP maps, if we'll just do a brief, they are basically smaller images. We'll back up here, undo levels and undo my desaturate. With the uh, cherry image that we have here, to save an image that can be viewed from a distance, you would export as your diffuse, but you would select your generate MIP maps. And what this is going to do is if you've been on maps before and you see from a distance uh, squiggly lines on buildings are very uh, you really don't even need to do it for fill planes because you don't see them for a distance but if you see like buildings and they don't have their MIP maps generated when you're coming up on them you'll often see squiggly lines from a distance before you get up closer and it gives this weird effect on there if you generate the MIP maps, it basically is creating a series of images that, let's reload that cherry one up now. I'll show you what we have. You can see that there's very few layers here. But if I open the cherry diffuse now and load the MIP maps, there's our base image. Actually, there's your maps right there, the first tab over here on this panel. You can see it has smaller images for different viewing distances and it basically is going to make it so that it's a little bit blurred when it's in the distance and you don't get that real squiggly line effect. A lot of the maps and objects that I import I realize that and also you're not loading the big graphic which is a huge thing too. You're loading one of the smaller images so it's less memory when you're further away and it's just giving you like a the texture of it but not as detailed as it you need it to be when it's up close so that's some basic imaging editing and I'm gonna crash the stream on you guys all again so I could save that and work on that getting that one ready for later but I'm coming right back and I am going to do a tutorial I'm gonna take one of those foliage layers out of the sample ma map that we've been working on the mod map and I'm going to bring it into Pleasant Valley 15 so I can plant some new bushes on PV 15 later on tonight. So be right back, hang in there, and that's going to be much longer, much more detailed, and it's a complicated process. So we'll make a tutorial on bringing a decorative foliage layer from a map that you may have found a nice foliage type of weeds or something on. And we'll show you how to get that into your map if you want to bring it over. And I'll be right back.